let's go inside swag. Uh, let's go, let's go inside swag. Come on, let's go, let's go inside swag. Uh, let's go, let's go inside swag. Woo. Let's go, let's go inside swag. Uh, let's go, let's go inside swag. Uh, let's go, let's go inside swag. Come on. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Dee Jackson here with Eddie Robinson, Jr., and welcome to Inside SWAC. And Eddie, we're beginning to see games that will have a big-time impact on the conference race. Most of those early non-conference games are out of the way, and now teams are really focused on SWAC games. Most of these teams have an identity by now. Now, you know who you are and what things you do well when you prepare for games for the next week, and you're getting ready for games week in and week out. But how much of that game plan is about getting better at what you do versus preparing for what the other teams are doing well. Well, you know, coaches always have that cliche. You know, we're going to focus on what we do well. We're going to worry about ourselves. And what they mean by that is by this time of the year, it's certain things as a team that you're able to execute. If you can run the ball well, well, hey, just keep running the ball. If you can pass well, and that's what you do. If you're a team that plays good defense, focus on that. So preseason, you may have a notion of, I have a good quarterback. Well, he may not be playing so well, but you have a good running back. You have to switch gears and become a running team. And that's what teams are trying to do right now. You take the good things that you can do and you move forward and that's what you hang your hat on. And in October, everyone is starting to hit full stride so we get an opportunity to see what all of these teams can do well. When we come back, we'll see what happens when Jackson and Southern get together. How Mississippi Valley won its second straight. How Alabama A&M responds when their high-powered offense struggles. And how Prairie View picked up one of the biggest wins in history. Years of culture and tradition have passed through the hands of those before us. It is now our duty to honor the heritage given to us and uphold it for those next in line. We go outside, never underrated. We go outside, never underrated. We will take the field and we will be tomorrow's legends. We are the Southwestern Athletic Conference. For more than 125 years, Alcorn State University has educated leaders in a my country. I Charlie Knight in Pine have made Southern University and AM College Baton Rouge their academic choice. For more information, log on to www.subr.edu. Well, it was a stormy night in Pine Bluff, Arkansas last Thursday as UAPB hosted Alcorn State under the lights on ESPNU. Neither team was able to score points in a pretty ugly first half offensively. Then as the bands performed during halftime, a terrible lightning storm erupted in the skies over the stadium. The UAPB band's show was cut short and the game was immediately suspended out of concern for student athletes and fan safety. The storm raged for hours and after more than two hours of waiting, the game was suspended. The SWAC office announced Monday that the game will not be continued and will be canceled. Since the game did not go a full three quarters per NCAA rules, stats from the game will not count. All in all, it is a very unusual situation for a game to be suspended by weather. It was homecoming in a minute as Mississippi Valley hosted Texas College. Valley quarterback Paul Roberts had his second consecutive solid out. He went 24 of 35 for 329 yards, five touchdowns, and only one interception. And the Delta Devils defense was outstanding, holding Texas College to only 18 yards rushing and only 155 total yards. Mississippi Valley with a 61-6 win. Now, Eddie, although Texas College isn't as good a team as uh, the SWAC teams Mississippi Valley will face this year, well, it's kind of a game that they can pay big dividends for the uh, Delta Delta. Well, I tell you what, Texas College is now the official whipping boy of the SWAC. <laughs> I think they've lost to all of the SWAC schools at least once this year. But like you said, this was what, exactly what Mississippi Valley needed. You know, as much as anything was confidence. After back-to-back three and eight seasons, Mississippi Valley needed to needed the feel of winning a football game. It doesn't matter as much who you beat. What matters is the belief that you can win the ball game. 
What comes next is the expectation that you can win. These guys today call it swagger, the belief that you know you are good at what you do. In the second non-conference game of the week, Alabama and m headed up to Indianapolis on, to uh, take on Tuskegee in the Circle City Classic. Alabama and m was shut out in its first quarter and fell behind 15 to nothing. Ulysses Banks got the Bulldogs on the scoreboard with a 49-yard touchdown run, and Alabama and m trailed 15 to seven at the half. In the third quarter, the Bulldogs blocked a punt, and Larry Lumpkin recovered it in the end zone for a touchdown. AM tied the game when Kevin Atkins scored on the two point conversion attempt. After an interception by Jeremy Williams, Alabama AM marched 17 yards, capped by a one yard Tony Green touchdown. On the very next possession, AM made another interception. This time it was Corey Morrison who returned it 42 yards for the touchdown. And Alabama AM scored 35 unanswered points to beat Tuskegee 35. 15, avenging that loss in the Circle City Classic from just a year ago. Well, I tell you what, the big thing I like about this is defense, defense, defense. And you can talk about the big three, the guys on offense, but Alabama A&M is going to go back to old school football. Anthony Jones is simply an old school kind of guy. So what if the passing game doesn't work? They will play great defense and special teams and run the ball right at you. Alabama A&M only had 21 passing yards, but running back Ulysses Banks carried 19 times for 104 yards, and the A&M defense held Tuskegee to only 60 yards rushing, and they forced five turnovers. On special teams, the Bulldogs blocked a punt for a touchdown and booted a couple of field goals. They find ways to win football games. Despite all the offensive fireworks we've seen from A&M this season, when all else fails, they return to what they can do as well as anyone, play smart, play hard, and play smash mouth football. And the road to get to the championship is definitely going to be defense for the A&M Bulldogs. I know we talk about Atkins and Harris and all of the great offensive guys and all that type of stuff, but they've been playing defense very well at A&M for an extremely long time. They have uh, had some great guys come through there on the defensive side of the ball. And few of them in the NFL right mm -hmm. now. That's right. Hey, when we come back, we'll take a look at two of the best games this year, and both could have huge implications in the SWAC race. This is Inside SWAC. Every day at Golden Flake, it all starts with a special premium potato that longs for something more, more flavor and more crunch. Seeking a life of delicious variety and guaranteed freshness in every chip and every bag. That's what Golden Flake brings to the table. For us, these are the good times. Finding our way to your neighborhood grocery and into your basket headed home. Turning potatoes into the life of your party. Golden Flake, the South's original potato chip. Welcome back to Inside SWAC. We had a pair of big games in the conference play, both of them big repercussions on the SWAC standings. First, we go to Jackson, Mississippi, where Southern University hosted the JSU Tigers. That's right, it was a Southern home game moved to Jackson to accommodate more fans in a larger stadium. After a scoreless first quarter, Southern quarterback Bryant Lee hit Warren Matthews with a 37-yard touchdown pass. In the third quarter, the Tigers took a 10-7 lead on Luther Edwards' score on five yards. In the third quarter, Southern coach Pete Richardson dug into his bag of tricks and tight end and former quarterback Warren Matthews hit Curry Allen for a 39-yard touchdown. Southern led 14-10. Eric Perry booted a pair of field goals, and Jackson State retook the lead at 16-13. The scene was set for senior Bryant Lee to do what he's done several times in his career, lead a fourth quarter game-winning drive and break the hearts of the other team's fans. This day would be different though. On the very first play, Lee took the snap and was intercepted by Ryan Rich. From there, Lloyd D. Dorzon carried five consecutive plays and blasting into the end zone for a nine-yard touchdown. And Jackson State pulls off a 22-14 win. It was JSU's first win of the season, and Eddie, it was a huge feather in the cap of the guys over at JSU. I mean, JSU defense really stepped up. They've been playing great defense all year long. Without much of a threat of a running game, JSU was able to drop more guys in the coverage and came up with two big interceptions. For Jackson State, it looks like Trey Rutland has finally solved the quarterback riddle. Rutland was 14 of 27 for 236 yards and only one interception. 
He also scrambled nine times for 127 yards. If they can get solid play like this from Rutland in the same good defense they've been having all year long, they can make another one of those late season runs just like last year. And I think the identity is going to be we're going to have strong defense and a physical running game and some big plays here and there out of Trey Rutland. That's what's going to get them back on track going down the stretch. Our <laughs> final game was billed as one of the biggest of the year as Prairie View met the only team that beat them last year, defending SWAC champion Grambling State. Prairie View scored first as K.J. Black got into the end zone from four yards out. The Panthers pushed their lead to 14-0 when Donald Baber scooted in from the four-yard line. Greg Dillon got Grambling on the scoreboard with a two-yard touchdown run. And Tigers seemed to have all of the momentum until Black found Anthony Whedon for an eight-yard touchdown. Prairie View led 21-10 at the half. Black kept it going in the third quarter as he bolted for 46 yards for a touchdown. Then the Grambling rally began. Dillon hit Van Phillips for a 37-yard touchdown, and the score was 28-17, Prairie View. On the next possession, Grambling blocked the PV punt, and Gabriel Fleming returned it 20 yards for the score. The G-Man struck again, but they intercepted Black on the Prairie View 18. Dillon took full advantage as he hit Ryan Allen for a 17-yard strike, and just like that, Grambling scored 19 points in one minute and 35 seconds to take a 29-28 lead. Prairie View refused to fold. Black brought the Panthers right back as he connected with Whedon for a 52-yard touchdown as Panthers regained the lead. And Prairie View, well, they defeat Grambling 35-32. to Big battle there. A lot of bragging rights on the line. And guys pull it out. Well, I tell you what, you have to look at the way Prairie View won this football game. Of course, it's huge for the Panthers. It means a big step in their journey to become the SWAC champions this year. Since Henry Frazier arrived four seasons ago, he had beaten every team in the SWAC except, of course, Grambling State, which he can now check off his list. But beating the Tigers is a huge mental hurdle for Prairie View. It tells them that they are capable of beating anyone, anytime. And now they control their own destiny. If they want to win the SWAC championship, all they have to do is win ball games. They don't have to worry about what other teams are doing. They don't have to scoreboard watch on Saturdays. But for the Grambling, things are a little bit different. They have to win and get some help from some other teams in the conference. Prairie View has what is, in effect, a two-game lead over the Tigers. But Grambling to get to Birmingham, Prairie View will have to lose at least twice. Still, all is not lost for Grambling State because Prairie View is in, un is in uncharted territory. The big question is how will they handle success? And they are used to being the underdog, of course. Prairie View has always been an underdog, but now they are the hunted. The Panthers have the target on their back. We'll see how they respond. I think Frazier has some tricks up his sleeve to keep his team motivated and focused and to stay humble and keep them going in the right direction. And that right direction will pass through Montgomery, Alabama next week when they take on the Hornets. We're back on Inside Swag in one of the most entertaining parts of the program where Eddie gets to play prognosticator and put on his big swami hat and everything. So let's run down the games of the week. Uh, we'll start with Texas Southern going to Rutgers this week. Well, I think first of all, if you're Texas Southern, you want to get in and get out injury free. Whenever you're playing up another division, you have to make sure that your players aren't injured. But I also know that Johnny Cole is a competitor. He's not just going to get up there and, and try to shorten the ball game by running the football. He feels like his hobo offense can score points on anyone. So I expect the Tigers to compete. But it's always a challenge when you're going up a division like that. Prairie View, hot off that big win against Grambling, will face another black and gold, the Alabama State Hornets at Crampton Bowl. This week. Yeah, I mean, this is the classic setup game for Prairie View A&M, but I don't really see a letdown in the Panthers because Frazier has really prepped this team all the way back to the preseason. He said, if we beat Grambling State, then we know that we have a big game against Alabama State on the road, and so they, they're kind of prepared for this moment. And for Alabama State, they have a lot of good things that's going for them. First of all, Prairie View has a 10-hour bus ride to get to Alabama. They just won a big game, so they're feeling good about themselves. And you have to give Reggie Barlow and the scheduler some, uh, some props because they scheduled the game at 1 p.m. So not only do you have a 10-hour bus ride, you have to get up early and play at 1. All that said, I don't think the Hornets will have enough to be Prairie View. I'm not like you. I'm not scared to go against my alma mater. I, I have a good non-biased opinion. And, and the Panthers are a good football team. You know, Alabama State, if they can run the ball, try to control the clock, shorten the ball game, they'll have a chance to do some things in the end. But K.J. Black and the Panthers are playing well right now.
Prairie View uh, looking to be a very tough opponent for Alabama State. Pine Bluff heads to Jackson State this week. Well, for Pine Bluff, first of all, they're plus eight in the turnover margin. They're playing extremely well on defense, and I think Pine Bluff will show up big against Jackson State. But in the end, I think Trey Rutland has really stepped up, and he's the quarterback. And they can just let him be a football player. Don't make him be a passer. Don't make him be a runner. Just let him go out there, play football, and enjoy himself. I think they can have some success. The guy is best when he's just dropping back, looking for someone to be open. If not, he takes off running. He just, just can just do the things that he's done naturally ever since he was a kid and just play football. I think that and the defense of Jackson State will be a little bit too much for Pine Bluff. Bragging rights on the line in the state of Mississippi. Which one do you like better, the Alcorn Braves or do you like the Mississippi Valley Delta? Well, this is going to be a good game, and I tell you, the, the guy who really is going to benefit from this one is Alcorn's Tim Buckley. He gets a do-over because last week he didn't play very good against Pine Bluff, but the game don't count. It's kind of like when we go play golf, you have those mulligans when <laughs> your first swing doesn't count. So I think Alcorn is going to come into this game with some big things going on. They're playing at home. It's their first home game. Also, they're doing a special recognition for Steve McNair and, and his legacy. And also, these guys are going to play big because they're on campus for the first time. You add all of those things up, I think Alcorn will have a little bit too much offense for Mississippi Valley. But you can't count out Valley because they've been putting some points on the board. Should be a nip and tuck battle. But I look for the home team. I always go with the home team in a tight game to pull this one out. That 12th man plays quite the difference. So now we go to Grambling, Louisiana for the game of the week. We'll, as we always do. Yeah, I figured it. Pop them off, shine them up, dust them off for the game of the week. And yeah. Alabama A&M taking on the Grambling State Tigers. Sooner or later, it's going to be a team that a and is going to play, and you're going to have to pick against them. It's just a matter of time. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, it hasn't happened in the last couple of years, but sooner or later, D, is that going to ever happen? I, I, hey, I'm just uh, a realist. Uh, you know, I'm just going going with the heart. Going with a and <laughs> Non-biased opinion. Yeah, non-biased, uh, right. Yes. Okay, yeah. Well, th this game, I tell you what, it has a, a lot of implications for both teams. Grambling State, of course, their back is against the wall after that big loss to Prairie View A&M. They can't afford to lose another ball game going down the stretch in the SWAC Conference. Conference to keep up with the Panthers. I really like what Grambling is doing defensively, but AM with the big three, you know, we talked about Atkins, Harrison, and also Ulysses Banks. They didn't play well last week, and I expect for them to rebound and have a really big game. But also defensively, you look at what AM brings to the ball game. I mean, they have this coordinator, Bronski Towns. He doesn't get a lot of recognition, but he's one of the best in the conference and in all of FCS. And they have a small but fast defense. And I think that small, fast defense is going to give the quarterback for ground and Greg Dillon a lot of trouble. I mean, he's a fast guy. He does a lot of things with his athletic ability. But A&M is one of the few teams in the conference that can match him player for player. You have Jeremy Maddox, who has eight sacks to lead the conference, and they have 24 sacks as a team. And I think that's going to really control this ball game. The speed and the intensity of A&M's defense is going to be too much for Gramlin to overcome. And so I'm still going with the D-men, though. Well, you, you mentioned Bronski Towns, and this guy has been a staple at Alabama A&M for many, many years. I mean, he's had several coaches that he's worked for, head coaches. So he is uh, pretty much the staple of that defense, and they pretty much have built it all around uh, his, his philosophies yeah, so and we're ideas. Gonna, we're going to switch. I'm <laughs> Well, we'll, we'll just... I, I, swear, I changed my mind. I'm going to go with A&M. Wow, on the spot. That, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> just the, with that little nugget of information. Because yeah, well, you're right. You're right. I was, I was in the middle, and as, and I was talking, you know, just listening to the whole Bronski Towns <laughs> comments that you made as an alumnus, that kind of pushed me over to the other side. And I, I like A&M. I well, think Grambling is going to have a tough time bouncing back. And that's the good thing about being a guy that comes on here as an analyst. Mm -hmm. I just give my opinion, which means I can never be wrong, and ultimately. Uh, well, I think what it was, you just had an opportunity to put this helmet in front of me, and I think you try to take advantage of that. If you want to see that, if you missed that, you can also hit the rewind button. Just join us on SWAC.org. You can watch the show at any time you feel like it, until next week anyway, when we put a new show out there. And of course, we're digital. We're in the digital medium and age. You can follow us on Facebook as well as on Twitter. So hopefully your favorite teams will be victorious this weekend as well. For Eddie Robinson and all of us here, I'm Dee Jackson, and we will see you at the game. Take care.